What are the best export settings for a JPEG file to host on your website, your portfolio, or other various social media? That's exactly what we're gonna talk about in today's tutorial. So what's going on everyday people? I'm Chad Everyday and today I'm gonna to tell you guys how to export JPEG files from Lightroom to best be hosted on different websites and also retain the best possible quality. Now if you're new to this channel and you'd like to learn more about photography, videography, and other various softwares that I use, go ahead and be sure to subscribe to this channel and also if you're excited to learn about today's tutorial, go ahead and leave a thumbs up on today's video. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into today's tutorial. Okay, so let's learn how to export export our photos as if we're going to put these on a website, on our social media, or anything like that. We're not going to concentrate on printing right now. This is strictly for the web. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this. So you can either go over to the web tab over here, or what I prefer to do is to go to file. I like to go to export, and then I like to go through these prompts. So I like my setup to be if I'm going to be uploading to go to my desktop. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in a folder, and I'm going to just call this web. You can call this whatever you like. You don't even have to put it in a subfolder. I just think it organizes a lot better. So the file naming and everything, I pretty much leave the same, but you can actually change these details if you like. But I just change the files to wherever I'm uploading, and I put the names in there so I have better control of the metadata and the tagging based upon the website that I'm putting it at. Okay, so this is a photo, so we're not going to worry about the video part here, but we are going to go to our file settings. So obviously we want this to be a JPEG because if it's going on the web, we want it to be a smaller, more compressed file so it doesn't take up as much space, and especially if it's on a website, your own personal portfolio, then in that case, it decreases the load time. So the color space, I'm just going to leave as sRGB, and then as far as quality, I actually drop this down to 70% because... On most screens, you're not going to tell a huge difference, if any difference at all, between 100%, 70%, but it does decrease the file size slightly, so that way, again, it's helping those load times. I don't check limit file size to a certain amount and set that unless I'm on a website that specifically tells me that I have to do that, or if you're only allowed to upload, say, a 2 megabyte file, then you could... Uh, set this at 2000K, which would be 2 megabytes. So you could do that if you need to, but you, typically I kind of steer away from that. Now as far as the image sizing, I never really resize it again unless I'm required to do so by the website that I'm uploading to. So usually what all I do is set my resolution to 72 pixels per inch. Now let me tell you guys this. When you're uploading to a website, you never want to get bigger than 72 pixels per inch, and that's because display monitors, cell phones, and different things like that, do not display above that number. So if you export your image above 72 pixels per inch, you're basically doing it for no reason, and you're also increasing your file size again, and it's going to slow down those load times. So metadata, if you want to keep that in, you can. If not, whatever. I just leave everything set exactly how it is. I'm not really huge on caring about that. Watermarking, I don't suggest you put a watermark on your image. I think it looks a little unprofessional. And again, as I talked about in a previous video, if somebody's going to steal your image, they're going to get rid of that watermark. It's not going to make a difference. And it just kind of covers up your image. I think it's distracting, so I just don't do that. And then I do nothing with the post-processing. Once you go through all those settings, all I do is click export, and what it's going to do, you'll see up here in the top left-hand corner, Lightroom is actually exporting that file, and then if we were to scroll down and go to our desktop, we would see our web folder we just created, and then we click on that image, and then bam, there's our JPEG that's all ready to go to be uploaded to web. So I hope this helped you guys out today. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and as always, be sure to create something new today.